Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. If you've made it here, it means that you might just love ISO standards as much as me and you are truly interested and possibly excited about learning more about them. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 7.2, competence. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Okay, let's get started. Let's take a look at what clause 7.2 wants us to do. First off, the clause states that the organization shall A, determine the necessary competence of persons doing work under its control that affects its environmental performance and its ability to fulfill its compliance obligations. And B, ensure that these persons are competent on the basis of appropriate education, training, or experience. That's right, it's up to the organization to figure out what competence requirements are needed for the different roles relevant to the environmental management system. You normally see what these competence requirements are by being documented in position descriptions or job descriptions. They could also be included in a training matrix or register. These requirements should be based on appropriate education or training requirements, which could be licenses, tickets, certifications, or certificate level training through to degree level. These could also include on the job training requirements. These will be determined by legal requirements, which you'll identify as part of clause 613. Industry requirements, and your own business requirements. As well as education and training, there may also be experience requirements. That could be what the person comes to you with, or it could mean that there is an element of on-the-job training to be completed before they are marked off as competent. Then C states that the organization shall determine training needs associated with its environmental aspects and its environmental management system. And D, where applicable, take actions to acquire the necessary competence and evaluate the effectiveness of the actions taken. The note at the end of this clause actually states that applicable actions can include, for example, the provision of training to, the mentoring of, or the reassignment of currently employed persons, or the hiring or contracting of competent persons. So now that you have established the competence requirements, whether it be by education, training, or experience individually or altogether, you can still consider taking on board people to the business with some shortfalls to the competence requirements. However, you need to make sure that actions are taken to complete training, further study, or on-the-job training or experience in tasks, which could also include mentoring from another person in the business. And then the final sentence in this clause states that the organization shall retain appropriate documented information as evidence of competence. So, any competence requirements that have been determined, you need to ensure that you have evidence that they have been achieved. So if you say that a diploma or a license or both are required for a particular job, ensure that you have collected and saved the documentation to prove that this has been met. If you also state that on the job training is required, ensure that there is a record of this as well. To summarize these clause requirements, an organization needs to, one, figure out what competence requirements are needed, 
basis on legal and industry education and training requirements, as well as on the job. Two, make sure that these competence requirements are met, even if the organization has to support some actions, including training to make sure they are achieved. Three, retain evidence that these competence requirements have been met by keeping a record of training completed, certificates gained, licenses, as well as on the job training records. It's pretty simple once you break it down like that. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your own management system? Thank you so much for joining me. Clearly, you are truly dedicated to learning more about ISO standards. I love having you learn with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me. Mm-hmm.